Hey guys, John here from JohnMurrayHeadshots.com. Um, okay, the reason for the intro is this video is probably going to end up on my LinkedIn page as well. Um, because I think it's important that I put it everywhere. Well, not so everywhere. This is a response to a bit of critique that I got for commenting on the Late Late Show last night. Um, everybody was commenting on the childbirth section where they showed the, the dummy delivering a baby. And I commented and said it wasn't as bad as the Amanda Brunker thing where she came live onto the Late Late Show and got Botox live on air. Now, a few people have reached out, some publicly, some privately, and said, look, you know, I have it. Or, you know, I don't agree with you Botox bashing. I don't Botox bash. If you want to get Botox and fillers, and that's what it takes for you to feel happy enough and confident in your own skin, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, and I encourage you to do it. But... I've also had a few comments and in my replies, I say that you don't know what you actually look like to everybody else in the whole world. You don't know how you look because the version of you that you see in the mirror is not what you look like to everybody else. It's the wrong way around. So when you see a photograph of yourself, that's the wrong way around to you. Um, so you go looking for a reason that it doesn't look like you in the mirror. You search your face and you go to one thing on your face you don't like and it's the same thing in every single photograph and it's always there. So whether it's your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your lips, anything at all, you'll go to one thing on your face that you don't like in photographs. And you blame that on making you feel uncomfortable. But it's not that. It's your facial expressions. Because we have cells in our brain called mirror receptors. Now this is just basic science. This is not me going into crazy detail. We have these cells called mirror receptors and they teach us to copy what we see in other people. So you see somebody who's happy and you respond with them by elevating yourself and being happy. You feel happy because they're happy. If somebody's sad, you feel sad with them. If somebody smiles at you, the only way you know you're giving them back an appropriate facial expression or an appropriate smile because you can't see it on your own face is to repeat their smile and that makes you feel happy on the inside. If it's a genuine smile, if it's a difficult or uncomfortable smile because she's wearing the same dress as you at a wedding and you're wearing it better, then you know that that's, you know, it's a fake smile. She's doing it because she feels she needs to. So when you see yourself in a photograph where you're uncomfortable because they're going to take a photograph and you're like, I'm not ready. Oh my God, my hair is not great. And you go, this isn't a real smile. It feels weird and it looks weird. And if you did it, it would feel uncomfortable because you're not getting a response from the hormone system in your body to tell you that you're happy. This is a happy moment. When we see candid photographs, so those photographs that somebody took that you didn't know they were taking the photograph. When they take that photograph and you see that image and you're like, oh my God, I really like that photograph. It looks like me. Of course it does because the facial expression is genuine. So you don't know what you look like. I guarantee you that you're a lot prettier than you think you are or you're a lot more handsome than you think you are because when you see yourself in the mirror, you instantly think that's what I look like. For your whole life, you will believe that's what you look like. So when you go for Botox or fillers, nobody tells you, hold on a minute, you're complaining about your nose, or you're complaining about your eyes, or you're saying that your lips are too thin. You're comparing yourself against somebody else for a start. So your lips are too thin in comparison to somebody else. You wish you had bi bigger lips because you've seen it somewhere. And you think that that makes that person prettier than you. It doesn't. There's 7.5 billion people in this earth and every single one of them are different. If you're a twin, you're different than your twin. You look different. You don't know what your face looks like when you're happy or you're sad or uncomfortable or you're lost or you're confused. You know, you don't know what happens. We've got somewhere in the region of 16,358 different musculature variations on our face. There was a study done, I think it was only last year, that showed that. So you don't know what you look like when you're shown about 31 different facial expressions, depending on what's going on in your day. When we think with this part of our brain up here, the front part of our brain, about moving our faces because we have to smile and because it's a habit and we're standing in front of the camera and the bit of your brain that looks like a walnut says it's time to smile, we go and we're uncomfortable so we back away and we look awful. This is not what you look like when you smile. You know, there's so many examples of people 
out there and I use them in talks as well with license from them that have come in and stood in front of my camera and I've said to them just do whatever you think you should do and they do it and then a few photographs down the line we're looking at a completely different person because they've elongated their spine and fixed themselves and they don't have all this going on because I make them do things like stick their head forward and squeeze their eyes there's loads of different things that I do that I see in them and I make them copy themselves I'm not tricking people into being happy and confident. I'm simply giving them the license to forget about having their photograph taken. Stand in front of the camera and be you. And I will take photographs. But I'll also teach you the difference between what the camera sees and what we see. And how to, how to cross that barrier. Because essentially what we see in photographs of ourselves is not us. Unless it's a candid photograph where somebody took it where you didn't know they were taking it. So to say, well, telling people that what they see in the mirror is wrong is unhealthy. It's not unhealthy. It's an education. It's, it's a step in the right direction. When you see yourself in the mirror, that's not what anybody else in the whole world sees. It's the wrong way around. You are the only person in the whole world who sees that image and you believe that's what you look like. Now, that one thing on your face that you don't like, look at my face. I have a bump on the side of my nose here. I really can't see it with the light. I have a heavy eyelid on this side. One ear is lower than the other. I have a big chunk off this ear as well. Um, and nobody sees any of that. And I don't see it. When I see a photograph, the only thing I see is this side of my lip hangs down very slightly. That's what I see when I see photographs. Does it make a difference to me? No, because I've gotten used to it. And I've gotten used to looking at photographs of myself and looking at the expression to see if I'm genuinely happy or if I'm uncomfortable. Because that's what we need to be looking at. If we're going to critique anything in photographs, that's what we critique. Don't be looking at your weight. Don't be looking at anything else. The other thing is when you go and you get Botox or fillers, that's fine. If that's what it takes to make you comfortable in your own skin. But there's no education and the education should come from therapists. It should come from somebody within that clinic. Somebody should say, hold on a minute. You're going to tell me now that you have thin lips or you don't like your cheeks or you don't like your forehead wrinkles or you don't like whatever okay that's fine here's why you don't like it so let's explore that for a minute and if you still want to get fillers and botox that's fine if you want to go and have your nose completely changed with rhinoplasty that's completely fine if you want to change your jaw if you want to change anything at all that's fine you can do that we will facilitate that but this is where it needs to start you need to understand why you feel that way I'm going to finish this video now, but I'm going to do it by saying one thing. I said already there's 7.5 billion people on this earth and every single one of them look different. If you have a problem with your lips or your eyes or your nose or your ears or anything like that, look into your family. Your parents or your grandparents or your aunts and uncles have it. You're going to... We only have these features on loan. So... You've gotten those features from somebody else. You never saw a problem with those lips when they were kissing you goodnight and telling you stories. You know, or when they were telling you they loved you. You know, you never saw a problem with any of that. You're going to pass those features on to your kids and grandkids and you're going to see it in nieces and nephews. So if you feel uncomfortable about your lips and you're saying my lips are ugly, I'm going to stick something into my lips to physically change them. That doesn't automatically change the lips of your kids and your grandkids and your nieces and nephews who have the exact same lips. It's not going to change the lips on your parents and your grandparents, the people who gave you those lips. If it takes for you to feel comfortable in your skin to have Botox and fillers and whatever else, that's fine. It is perfectly, perfectly fine. But understand that you don't see a problem with those features in those other people because there's nothing wrong with them they're beautiful and you go to bat to defend them if anybody ever called them ugly the only reason that you see that is because it makes you understand that there's something different between what you see in a photograph and what you see in the mirror that's it you're looking for a reason why you don't look like the person in the mirror when you're looking at a photograph and we blame that on making us feel uncomfortable and it's always, always, always our facial expressions because we're doing things like this. 
and the cells within your brain won't help you to feel happy and confident. They're telling you to feel uncomfortable because the person in the photograph is uncomfortable. I do these talks all the time. I do them for multinationals, I do them for big companies, small companies. And I'm talking at a few things this year. I'm traveling to Belgium at one stage this year to talk. Look, the way it is, is essentially the way I finish every single talk that I do with any of these companies. And it's how you walk in the skin you wear is your decision. Why not embrace it? Because what other choice do you have? Look, this is open for discussion. If you disagree with what I say, comment, send me a message, like anything, contact me and I will happily discuss it. You know, because I'm open to change. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. But everybody's entitled to their opinion on this. And I think a discussion about what happens before you get physical changes is important before you actually go and get physical changes.